these paintings, which continue to get larger and larger, they are always influenced by a specific memory of something. I was teaching at a YMCA. We would take the young kids for rides on a roller coaster. And from the height, the roller coaster would dip down toward the water. And as you ran toward the water, is that all of the illusions were just like ribbons of color. And I said, God, if I could paint that, you know, where would I be? And this sense is that in order to paint that, you had to rely more upon process than actual upon realism or literal images. So that the structure of process and large aspects of cloth is only one part, and that to recall the intelligence of the work, one depends upon symbolism. And for this piece, the symbolism of fireflies and ferris wheels sort of contain not only constant visions that were had in building the piece, but are meaningful in their opposition to give description to the two pieces that will be built. I'm aware that each time that I chose to do something, that it's very, very, very large or very immense. And it's, it's like being out of doors while inside when you're in one of these pieces. Anyone who's been around Washington in the last 20 years knows about Sam Gilliam. He's one of Washington's foremost painters. He's one of America's foremost painters, known principally for abstract paintings, color field paintings. There's no question that Sam has his roots as an artist in the Washington Color School. He adopted the technique of staining paint into canvas uh, that were, was being used by painters such as Morris Lewis, Kenneth Noland, Howard Maring, and others. Right from the start, though, his paintings were rather different from theirs. Uh, theirs uh, were lighter, um, uh, brighter, uh, lighter spirited, in a way. His were more brooding, a little more melancholy, a little more introspective. They seemed very different in their tone. The other thing that separated him from the Washington Color School right from the outset was that uh, the other painters would uh, stain the canvases and then stretch them again. Uh, what Sam did that was different was n not to restretch them, but to hang uh, his paintings, to drape them against the wall, hang them from the ceiling, hang them in the corner of a room, um, to create a kind of environment out of his paintings. There's an incredible spirit of generosity in his work that you also find in Sam Gilliam, the person. By the very ambition of his work, I think he also sweeps a lot of people up into it. still end up thinking like uh, one person. The master printer, uh, William Wiggy, had just gotten a very large press and that we decided to print these hundred yard uh, lengths of paper and he turned the 
press, which was six feet wide by about 16 feet long into what is known as a web press. We not only print it, but we also paint it right there in the uh, print studio and roll the lengths of paper right into the racks, right as you would a specific sheet of paper. And then we realized that we had to see the thing. And so we took it out uh, on the lake. And it gave you that immense feeling of success so that we went back and continued to print others. Although the, the work is about process, it's also about how that one might see nature through myth about fireflies or through the movement of Ferris wheels. Fireflies is very generational, let's say. It starts and it stops, but it comes back again like the phoenix. And the Ferris wheel is symbolized by a feeling of openness. process of collaboration is like uh, spontaneous and that it is a way in which that the, the, the work of art becomes its own theater, which is to say that the work of art becomes its process. I guess when you say that something is, that, is abstract and not real is that you hide something within the work a little deeper for it to be sought after, like an Easter egg. And then a person finds it and they really have more, rather than to give them something that floats on the surface and he doesn't see what is deeper or what is implied in other ways.